Hey guys, sup, Scottish Dick here once again. Right, um, I apologise for the scarf, I'm not going hipster on you. Um, at least not any more hipster than, than I normally am. Uh, it's cold as fuck in this flat, I'm too tight to put the heating on, because this is a Glaswegian flat, and it would be cold anyway if you put the heating on, so I just have to brave this uh, bitter uh, November cold and just get on with this. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it's Sunday, and I'm bored, I'm cold, uh, I wanted to make a video there, I uh, didn't have anything to talk about, so it's at times like this I literally just look at the shelf and be like, okay, let's talk about that, this is probably going to be the most, one of the most pointless videos I've ever made, but I just felt like talking about this particular subject, because um, I'm coming up to 75 hours of Dragon Quest 7 now, okay, I'm loving the game, I really am, I'm tweeting about it constantly, like, my Twitter is so boring recently, you know, you just look, they're all tweets about Dragon Quest 7. I apologise for that, but I'm just really, really liking it. Um, but, as I've talked about in the past before, you know, like, um, I have this sort of mentality where uh, very rarely do I actually come across an RPG that I am really loving, and my mindset is more akin towards, like, just trying to play and beat as many RPGs as possible. Just to broaden my horizons, you know, extend my knowledge and stuff so that I can sound smart whenever people talk about these games. You know, that's, that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, I can admit that, you know, it's sad as fuck, but that's kind of how I've got what I've gotten to at this point. So I'm really enjoying Dragon Quest VII. I'm very thankful for it. Definitely one of my fa most favourite games of the year. Um, I guess I'll never play this then, if, if that being the case. This is the original PlayStation version. Uh, not as good as the 3DS version, from what I've heard, that is, but, you know, whatever. Dragon Quest, I'm sure, still will stay one of my favourite franchises. Cannot wait for 11, that will be so good. But, yeah, uh, as I was talking about, you know, wanting to extend my um, knowledge and stuff, I started to think there are a lot of RPGs um, out there at the moment that I have not, like, properly sat down uh, to play yet, you know? Um, so, I'm thinking to myself, why don't I talk about a few of them, you know, and I've got an absolute big pile here, and um, we'll just get on with it. I'm just going to, I'm literally just going to talk about them and say, this is why I want to play it, and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, very pointless video. Stick around if you want. Let's get right into it. I'm sorry for the jump cut there. I've finally given up and I've put the heat on, sod it. It's just too cold. Yeah, here we go. I've decided to show off 12 games here, and uh, these top three actually are uh, games that I have already put a lot of time into, but I just haven't actually beaten, and I really want to beat, you know, because uh, I can safely say in these three instances that they're excellent games, but for whatever reason, I didn't fucking finish them. So let's get into it. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is one that you should all know about, definitely. Um, Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, this was like, um, I don't know if, I've prob I probably have talked about it before, but I used to have like this real pet peeve with strategy RPGs. It's gone now. Um, but I, I, was def I was definitely going for a time where I was wrestling, you know, like just emotionally and mentally just like exhausted with this game. Because I so desperately wanted to beat it, I so desperately wanted to have Fire Emblem under my belt, you know, to say that I'd beaten and enjoyed it. But I wasn't for whatever reason, because strategy RPGs were just a weird genre for me, okay? And that has since changed, I've still, you know, I'm really digging this genre and all that now, but this game in particular really just like... This and Valkyria Chronicles uh, really just like signify my contempt well, not even content, because I didn't want to hate them, just like how I used to feel about them. But yeah, I got like a good two-thirds into this game. Um, and I have it downloaded on the Wii U, so I can save state abuse if I want, alright? Um, but I really do want to get round uh, to beating this one again, you know, and get through to the end. Because it is an excellent game. This and Sacred Stones as well uh, are just really good. You know, most Fire Emblem games are, but yeah, Fire Emblem for sure. Uh, same with Advance Wars. That's, that's not really an RPG, I would say, but I gotta get through the Advance Wars games as well, because I played the first Advance Wars. It was excellent, you know, so yeah, definitely Fire Emblem. Gotta get round to this. Uh, this next one, actually, is um, I think I've talked about the sequel a fair bit, but not actually the original. Uh, 
Grandia for the PlayStation. Now, I have the sequel on the Dreamcast. I love that game. Um, brilliant RPG as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but I did actually play this one first and I got pretty much to the very end. And I didn't beat it because my console that I was playing it on started to freeze. You know, that was my reason. You know, it wasn't like any sort of like, um, oh, it's not, I'm not really feeling it or I don't want to play it sort of thing. I literally could not play it because of the fucking console was breaking and it was, I was heartbroken because I do, even based on what I've played the new, think this game is a lot better than its sequel. The sequel is really good too as well, you know, you can, uh, you can get that on Steam now. Actually, why is this one not on Steam? Why is Grandia 2 on Steam and not this? Or is it? I should probably check that before I go off mouthing it off. But either way, it should be, because this is a really wonderful JRPG. You know, I love the characters and the world and all that. It was brilliant, you know. I really gotta get back into this one, seriously. Just to, just to actually have beaten it, because, again, I remember exactly where I was and what was happening up until the very end, you know, and I was like, oh. It uh, leaves a hole in my heart, it really does. And uh, the last one I want to talk about, uh, that I... I've, uh, I think twice I've tried to, like, um, play through this game and beat it, but for whatever reason, just, like, stop for stupid reasons, and that's, uh, Radiant Historia for the DS. This is, like, uh, I kind of want to say a successor to Chrono Trigger. Um, that's probably a really inaccurate way to say it, because the biggest comparison is that it's a, a time-traveling game. But the thing I love about it is that, um, you basically play this character who has control over time, essentially, but in a way that he can return to any point in time. Like, you could be, like, to the end of the game, and then you could just feel like, actually, I kind of want to go back to the beginning. You can maintain your levels and your items and all that, I believe, uh, but you can go back there and just play for it again, whether you want to grind or something or play for an event in the game. What have you, and of course there's always like, there's like splits in the timeline and whatever that you can d d divulge, divulge, I don't know if that's a word, but yeah, basically there's a lot of different paths you can go down uh, with time travel in this, and it's such an amazing concept, you know, it was like, and I love the fact that it's been like, put into a game like that, you know, and I don't know why I've not properly, I, every time I go down to play I don't know why I'm just like, yeah, can't be arsed. Gotta get back to it. Really gotta get back to it. Seriously. Right, so uh, here are games that maybe I've dabbled in slightly, but not to the extent that I should, and uh, games that are definitely on my uh, to playlist. Okay, the first one is I don't actually. I, don't, I know very little about this game except for one um, particular fact, and that is uh, Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light. Is that the title? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, uh, Final Fantasy The Four Heroes of Light, as far as I'm. As far as I'm aware, this is a spin-off Final Fantasy game, um, and that is literally all I know, but the reason that I'm really wanting to get to this one is because um, it's from the make, the people who made this eventually went on to make uh, Bravely Default, which is one of my favourites, you know, and uh, you know, you can just tell from like screenshots and all that, that it has, it has that same sort of um, feel, you know, you've got your four playable characters, turn-based combat and stuff, and yeah, it looks like it would be a really good, pretty much just like what Bravely Default was back when it was just Final Fantasy, you know, which in a lot of ways Bravely Default is anyway, so yeah, I just basically wanted to play it because it's a little bit like Bravely Default, that's, uh, that's pretty much the all the reasons I need, to be honest. Uh, right, so uh, next one is, now this was one that I popped in. And I just remember not digging as much. I didn't like how it looked and there was some sort of weird thing with how you earned money in the game. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what it was, but I just remember playing it and being like, ooh, I don't really like that. Uh, Baton Kytos uh, for the GameCube. Made by Monolith. That's what, the Xenoblade guys. So I was like, oh, oh, definitely, definitely, you know. Incidentally, I probably should put like um, uh, Xenosaga. Um, episode 2 on this, because I beat Xenosaga episode 1, like, a good few year ago, and I didn't like it as much as most people apparently do. You know, I was, I don't know what it was, that just what that just didn't grab my attention as much as, like, Xenoblade or Xenogears as well, um, to a lesser extent. Um, so, I do want to get around to it, but I think I'll probably play this first, because um, I've, uh, I've 
but following it for, well, I say follow it, I knew, always knew what it was, and there was music from this and Smash Brothers and stuff, and uh, I like the fact that this was essentially um, a pre, well, it was obviously being a Nintendo game, it was almost like um, this was a result of Monolith's relationship with Nintendo, because of course they would eventually go on to be part of Nintendo, and make Xenoblade, which I love to death and stuff, and... Project Cross Zone games and whatnot, so I do want to give this a go for sure. I'm upset though because the sequel to this game, or rather, Bet Baton Kaitos Origins as it's called, uh, was never released over here. It's only released in Japan and America, which um, pains my heart because I hope it's like, I hope not to play this and fall in love with it so much that that uh, truth will just hurt me so much more. So, yeah. But either way, gotta get around to it for sure. Um, next is, uh, this is, um, uh, this is definitely something, uh, how should I start this off? You know what a game was that definitely, again, I've talked, I, I talked about it before, I definitely was a game that gave me that feeling of, oh, I don't want to, I gotta come up with a name for it. Like, that feeling of you don't want to keep playing it, but you've already put so much time into it that you feel like you need to play it anyway, so you're constantly like battling with yourself, it's like, do I give this up or do I keep going? Uh, but one game that definitely gave me that feeling greatly was the first Wild Arms, which I kind of regret because there's a lot about Wild Arms I really liked, you know? And the game I'm talking about now is Wild Arms 2, which I didn't pick up, you know? Um, I actually picked up Wild Arms 3 um, in a PlayStation 4 sale, so I actually downloaded that on PlayStation 4. Being the sort of person I am, I will just go ahead and buy Wild Arms 3 anyway, even if I don't end up liking it, that's just how I am. Um, but I want to get through them by the numbers, you know, so I want to play Wild Arms 2 first. Um, I don't know if people consider this better than the first one, because again, there was things in Wild Arms 1 that I do remember just loving. But I also just remember wishing it would end and stuff. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible feeling when you're trying to, like, broaden your horizons with JRPGs, it really is, you know? Um, but yeah, Wild Arms 2, I'll get round to it. <laughs> pretty much all I can say about a lot of these games. Uh, next, I thought we should talk about a Shin Megami Tensei game. Now, in all likelihood, I'll probably not play any Shin Megami Tensei games until Persona 5 comes out next year, you know, because uh, I'm excited for that, I definitely am, you know, who isn't I, really? Uh, I'll be picking that up on PS4, but... If it wasn't for that, I'd probably be playing this, um, Lucifer's Call, or, fuck, what's it called in America? It's called something else in Nocturne? I think that's it, I Basically, this is Shin Megami Tensei 3. Um, of the main series Shin Megami Tensei games, the only one I've ever played is Shin Megami Tensei 4. And again, that was one of those games that I kind of just played through at the end for the sake of it. I don't think I really liked Shin Megami Tensei 4. And I'm really sad to say that, because I know it was such like a high-profile game and stuff. Um, and there's that like sequel to Shin Megami Tensei 4 that's just come out. Um, Apocalypse, I think it's called. Um, I'll try and remember to correct that if I'm wrong. Uh, but I don't know if I want to get that, because I was so... I didn't really dig the fourth one that much. But I do love Personas, you know. Again, who does not So I will get Persona 5 when it comes out, and they're... Definitely have been SMT games before that were Persona that I've adored as well. Mainly the Digital Devil uh, Saga games. Love those ones, you know, they're so good. Um, so hopefully that one's in the same vein, so we'll see, we'll see. Now, this one, this is a series that I was already talking about strategy RPGs, right? This is a series that I am so desperate to be into, so desperate to like boast my knowledge about because I hear about it all the time and everything I hear about it sounds so wonderful, sounds so, oh my god, I bet I would love that. But I've yet to take that first step and properly start playing it. And I own like every game in the series, in fact I own multiple versions of every game in the series. And that's this, Disgaea, okay? Disgaea Hour of Darkness is called. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, and five, five off there on the PS4, just behind me there. I think I've got two versions of Disgaea 4 for the Vita and like the uh, PS3, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the same for the third one as well, and I know Disgaea 1 and 2 are also on the PSP, and I think there's one also on the DS, I don't remember if that's a new game entirely, but yeah, this game's fucking everywhere, and so many people love it, and I want to be one of them, I really, I think this will be my next game, 
Yeah, I... I really want to be in the Disgaea, that's probably, this. if this was a numbered list, this would probably have been number one. I don't think I've ever really talked about this either, you know? But yeah, in fact, can someone answer this question for me? Can you jump into any of the Disgaea games? Should you, like, play them in order? I'll probably play them in order anyway, but just as a wee reassurance to me in case I do randomly want to, like, start at number five or something. Do you need to play them in order? I know that there was, like, a Disgaea D2, which I've got here somewhere, which was a direct sequel to this game. Okay, I know not to play that one until I've played this one. Um, but yeah, it's... Disgaea Man! Disgaea Man! You know, it's like... <clears throat> right. Uh, this one's uh, another series, actually, which... I gotta be honest, I'm, been, I'm talking about... I'm gonna show this up here, mainly out of, like, spite that I have, like... It's the Sega fanboy in me, but it's also the person in me saying, you spent a lot of money collecting all these games, why haven't you actually fucking played one of them yet? That's uh, the Shining Force games, okay. So I got both of these on the Mega Drive, I got Shining Force 3 on the Saturn, I got the Shining Force CD for the Sega CD, okay, Shining Force EXA for PS2, Shining in the Darkness, Shining in the Holy Ark, I got all of these fucking games, not played one of them yet. And I'm aware that it's like, um, you know, it was Sega's answer to Fire Emblem, so I probably would like it a fair bit. But yeah, I just I just gotta get my foot in with it, right? Again, this isn't really as like, um, there isn't like a sense of want as much as there was like with uh, the Sky, I guess. But yeah, I really gotta pull my finger in it. Because um, obviously, I think like the RPG series on the Mega Drive that get talked about the most is Fantasy Star and this, you know? And I love me some Fantasy Star, I love Fantasy Star so much, so... Really gotta get around to this, again. I've said that for all of these, I know, I'm repeating myself. I didn't force you to watch this video. Okay, we got three games left, they're all PS2 games, right. This next one, I remember buying this, like, years and years and years ago. I remember sitting in it, in fact, yeah, I remember sitting in the car. Actually, this copy's all fucked up. I already knew this, but I remember sitting in the car with this game thinking, yeah, I'll get round to this at some point. And that was almost ten bloody year ago. Valkyrie Profile 2. Probably not went on to this yet because I want to play the first one first. And that one's rare as fuck. Um, I know that this is a prequel to the first one, so there's no real, like, um... There's, there's probably not really that much, uh, repercussions in, uh, whichever one I play first. Uh, I've, like... I've seen, like, gameplay of it, it looks like something I'd be really into, but I just want to go for the first one first, right? I'm weird like that, and I don't want to play it on the PSP. I've researched this a fair bit, you know? I've heard the PSP version's a bit botched, not as good as the PS1 game. But the PS1 game wasn't released over here, so I'm gonna have to import it to America, and that'll be pricey! That's money that I could put towards my heating bills, you know, it's like... Mm. The first world pains of being a game collector. Alright, next game. Okay, next game. These guys like level 5. I like level 5. Have I not talked about a level 5 game already on here? Uh, I don't think I have. But yeah, level 5. I love me some Dark Chronicle, or Dark Cloud if you will. I love me some uh, uh, Dragon Quest, as I've already talked about. They made Dragon Quest 8. Brilliant game. Um, and this is one that, um, I've always, like, known about. It's always been lingered in the background for me, you know? Uh, but I just, like, kept saying to myself, yeah, I need to get round to that. Um, and that's Rogue Galaxy. Oh, Nino Kuni! Nino Kuni, that was the other one. I kept trying to think, what's that other level 5 RPG that I love to death? It was Nino Kuni. Uh, yeah, Rogue Galaxy. Um... Looking at this right off the bat, I'm thinking, like, you all know how much I love Skies of Arcadia, so I see this cover and I'm like, Skies of Arcadia, but in space, and I'm just like, ooh, that'll be good. That would be very, very good. Um, and that's literally all I know about this game. I don't know a scooby else about it other than the fact that it's, a, it's by level 5 and it reminds me a bit of, of Skies of Arcadia, but I, it's looks really nice, it looks like a good RPG, and a lot of people love it. You can get this on PS4 as well, along with Dark Chronicle, which I highly recommend. Dark Chronicle is like... I've already played Dark Chronicle, but it's like one of my favorite PS2 games, seriously. But yeah. 
I'm trying to think of something to say other than I gotta get around to this one, but I can't, because I do, so. Last game, thank fuck. Uh, right, now this one, I only, there's four of them. And I only own the first two, because they're, again, like most things, they're awful pricey. And I also know very little about them. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Dot Hack, you know? The, I mainly know about Dot Hack for uh, Project Cross Zone. You know, for the 3DS games, right? I know they're by Namco. I know that they're um, RPGs and what have you. Um, and they're made, they're in four parts, and they definitely have a following as well, you know? Um, other than that, I really don't know much about it. It's got a 45 minute anime DVD included, which, yeah, it's there. Cool. Um, and I know this is the last one and stuff. I probably should have a lot to say about it. But I don't, I should have left this guy up for the last one. This is just another game that I gotta get round to. And that's that. Do you guys like these videos? Do you guys, when I don't really have anything too worthwhile to say, I would argue that I never have anything worthwhile to say, but I just feel like talking about video games and stuff, you know? It's like, it passes the time, gives me something to do, gives me something to render, and all that jazz. But, I don't know. Let me know. In fact, let's play this then, right? There was 12 games there. Why don't you tell me which one I should play next? In fact, let's do that. As soon as I beat Dragon Quest 7, let me know which one I should play next. If you want to be nice and just say this guy, because that's probably the one I need to get around to the most. But uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's have a little audience interaction and, you know... <sighs> see you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I'm, I'm freezing. I'm freezing.